And welcome to the SMX Insider Post Race Show. Great day of racing at the Yamaha Racing. Bud's Creek National, all part of the Super Motocross World Championship. The next to last round for Pro Motocross. Jason Wigan and James Stewart here. Jason Thomas and Adam Cianciarulo reporting from the racetrack. And we're checking out the podium scene. And it's about to get loud because here comes Aaron Plessinger. Elect president. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're the Washington, D.C. area. They need to get political here. Get this guy on the ballot. Here comes Hunter Lawrence. And uh, there's Hunter. And picking up and maintaining the red plate. And you got the Washington, D.C. themed trophies there. The they have some cool Chase trophies this year. Well, there's a little competition in all the tracks. Whoever has the best trophy of the year gets free ads for their uh, you know amateur races in the Racer X magazine. So they, these ads are valuable. So they battle it out. And there's the big one. 24 no, that would have been nice. Throw some ass back in that day. Yeah, yeah, yeah a lot know. of first place trophies. I don't yeah. know if they were trying that hard back then, unfortunately. They were, but I had some cool ones. Okay. Play. So Sexton has five in a row after going 2 1 of the day. He and Hunter Lawrence split the motos as they did last week as well. But just as cool as we were signing off the air of the broadcast show, we got to talk to Eli Tomac and Malcolm Stewart. A lot of different riders with different goals coming in. And they both seem pretty happy with their days as well. Yeah, I 100% Malcolm stoked. I mean, you, you heard him talk about just how the year's been going, building and being out here racing and, you know, making these laps has been helping him out. So him being up here, just starting to pay off. And then you hear Eli in the same spot, just different spot, you know, coming back, just really needing that confidence to feel like he's Eli Tomac. I think he feels that way. Second moto. Um, Sakamoto's kind of expected. He didn't seem too bummed with him. Chase dropped the champagne over there. Just like the motos, he had the two tip-overs. It's like he said, it's just something about this track. <laughs> he, said, he always falls off the bike at this track, and it did happen. I'll show you here the highlights. First of all, 450 Moto 1. Hunter Lawrence, it doesn't matter what track we go to, he gets the starts. Nah, it was just... A lot better than second motor, but this first yeah. one, it was a close uh, call here. Justin Cooper over jumps his step up, gets into Hunter. Was able to get up, and that was a scary crash right there. Nothing he can do, just race an incident. Justin gets up, gets finishes 20th place, but yeah, he was all right, but it took a hit in the points for him for that third place. Here's the charge from Sexton working on Christian Craig. Yeah, it's the theme of the day. You're gonna see Chase Sexton passing a lot of guys today. Uh, he's making his way up to third place. So. Uh, passing Christian Craig, who rode good that first moto. This was Hunter Lawrence after Aaron Plessinger was leading for a couple laps. Hunter stayed into it, was able to get on the inside. AP tries to fight with him, but Hunter had a good flow all day long. And once he got out front, he didn't relinquish that lead at all. Yeah, that's it. He's in the lead. Now the eyes go to Sexton, who's third and starting to close and now gets to his teammate for second. Yeah, I'm just noticing the theme. Chase was passing a lot of guys on the outside. You know, when you're coming out of the pack, Chase had the opportunity to find different lines and, and see where guys were going, and he put it he put it to use. Goes after Hunter Lawrence, just only a few laps left, just makes a small mistake, easy mistake. Gets in that corner, loses the front end, tips over, and since it was at the end of the race, he didn't have enough time to recover. Bounce back two weekends in a row, Hunter Lawrence, your first Moto winner, look good at doing it. Yep, making that new 2025 Honda look good. But the question is, can he finally get a second moto and an overall win? Well, you know he's going to get the start, and he does. Yeah, he went with the paddle tire, the scoop tire, to help him off the start. He executed that, and this is the first time in a few weeks that he's been up front in the second moto. Chase Sexton, after following Aaron, and you can see Hunter Lawrence in front of him, makes a nice pass on his teammate. It was the only rider that I've seen that second moto really hitting that double, kind of catches Aaron off, off guard, and then sets his sights onto that 96. But here comes another mistake from the four. Yeah, the lap rider in front of him, so you wonder if that played attention. But yeah, Chase goes in there just like the first moto, loses the front end. But he had plenty of time. This is not a replay. This is him making the same move a couple laps later on his teammate. And as you heard, Aaron, he's like, I was looking forward to Hunter Lawrence. And I looked over, heard the bike revving, and it was at number four coming up to the pack. 
trying to chase down Hunter Lawrence, which he does. We were thinking about he was going to pass Aaron in the same spot, and then Chase decided to go around the outside with the power move. It's like the video game hit the supercharger on him. Hunter didn't even recognize that he was there. And once Chase made that pass, he's been doing like he's been the last second moto. Those guys see him for a moment, and then they don't. Chase is on the roll. Yep, he has been unbeatable in the second motos, and that's what has preserved the win streak five in a row for the Red Bull KTM rider out of Illinois. Now in position to capture the 450 Pro Motocross title for the first time in his career next week in Indiana. Takes the congratulations from Hunter. Still looking for that first ever overall win. It's 2-1-1-2 two, one, one, two between them for the second week in a row. Plessinger third. And there's that Malcolm Stewart performance. Best finish since at this track in 2013. And you look at the points. Justin Cooper was third for the majority of this championship. But Plessinger rallying, rallying with those podiums as of late has taken that spot away. And Jason Anderson, fifth in points. Close between he and Cooper. As we have one race to go in this championship. That's next weekend. Also, that'll seed the playoffs. When you look at these points, Sexton already has the SMX number one seed wrapped up. So he'll start with a three-point lead over Hunter Lawrence as we go into the three-round three playoff, two playoff rounds in a world championship. So we went to Bud's Creek. Hunter Lawrence, very good again. Still can't get it done. It was the same thing Hunter was asked on the podium. Great rookie season, solid rookie season. But if he ends the year without getting that overall win, is it going to be a little frustrating? Well, I mean, yeah, of course. I yeah. think Hunter would be frustrated, especially with his brother being out and the opportunity to win so many races. But, you know, I know he's gotten second and Chase beat him the, the last two races. But Hunter is a different rider in his second moto. Like, I feel like this weekend he struggled a little bit on the tire setup. So yeah. did, if he had a better tire, would he have been able to keep pace? Who knows? And then last weekend, he rode good second moto. Chase was just out front. Um, he got a bad start, and he had to make his way. So he is different. I'm sure he'd be a little disappointed if he's not able to win the race. But overall, I mean, the, the kid's riding great. I mean, really good. We just ran into Chase Sexton, which is a different rider at this point. Yeah, and Sexton, I believe it's his fifth year in the class. So that's a lot of experience and data that Hunter's trying to build really quickly in the 450 division. Give you the 250 highlights from Bud's Creek. Next to last round of the Pro Moto Cross Championship. Hayden Deegan uses the inside to perfection to get the lead. There's a massive pile up around the outside. And Deegan was thinking title today, and that was a big step. Yeah, well, I think Hayden was thinking title in the back of his mind. That was at least his word. He wanted to come out and put wood to these guys. Yes. And at first moto, he's able to do that. But big crash with Max Hansty going down, Ty Master pool, a bunch of these riders. Also was able to get up and, and ride. Max had to pull into the pits. He was heard. I didn't see him out there the second moto, That's but right. RJ was out here. He goes down the first lap, but does a good job of getting back up, finishing ninth that first moto. And then it was the rookie, Julian Vermeer, yeah. running second behind Levi. Gets passed by Chance Hymas, who looked froggy in the beginning part of the race. He tries to go after Levi Kitchen, which was running really good, but yeah, it was good to see Julian up. And then all of a sudden, you can see Chance goes up on the inside of Levi. Levi starts fading, and we were wondering, was there something going on with the motorcycle? But come to find out, he was sick, started to fill in in the mid part of that moto, does a great job at recovering, and ends up in third place after Chance goes down. Our own Adam Cinderella was talking about Hayden Deegan wrapping up championship. <laughs> he goes down right here, but Hayden gets back up. And no stress, because he had a, almost a 30-second lead. And this was the final lap, Chance Hymas only a few corners left. Tom Bial was right behind him. This was for second, and that's going to loom large towards the end of the day with the overall him being from second potentially to now eighth. Yeah. But it was the guy all year long, Jason. It was, and this title was going to happen, but we didn't know what happened in Moto 1. But with Kitchen taking third and Deegan the Moto win, that was enough to wrap up the title in the first Moto of the day. And the full celebration would come in Moto 2, but he does get the hug from mom and dad. We go to Moto number two. This time, Deegan does not get the start from the inside. Yeah, it gets, didn't get the jump, gets pinched off by these guys. And as we've been talking all day, start position on the first lap is a huge key, and Hayden figured that out the second Moto. But it was Levi Kitchen back out front again, feeling pretty good. And we were wondering how he was going to finish it off. 
Right now, this is battle for 9th, 10th, and 11th. Hayden was behind his teammate since the first lap, and Nick Romano kept fighting, kept fighting, eventually got passed by RJ, who gets around Nick. And then Hayden still had to fight against him and go, but it was just a difficult motor for him, but kind of hard for him. And then it was Tom Vial making his way around Jalik Swole, making his way up into third place, and then tried to set his sights on the two leaders out front, Chance Hymas and Levi Kitchen, who's out front about five seconds. I thought Hymas was going to get Kitchen multiple times, but Kitchen answered each call and holds on for the Moto win, and with 3-1 scores, takes the overall Hymas because of that crash of Moto 1, 2-8, not in contention for the overall. And here's Deegan, 10th in the Moto. This is actually worst of the season. And he said he was only concerned with one thing, get to the finish line and hold this number one plate. Well, he accomplished that. That's a big one, only his second full season as a pro. And he has two titles, last year's SMX Championship. Obviously, he's in play to win that again this year as the playoffs begin September 7th. Vial second overall for the day. Deegan's 110 was good enough for third. Hymas just off the podium fourth. Swole, another good run, fifth in the triumph. Blue was sixth. Those are the standings. Pretty much assured all these positions, for the most part, locked down as we have one more pro motocross race to go at Ironman. Looks like it's going to be Deegan, Kitchen, Vial, Hymas. Maybe Masterpool can leapfrog Shimoda for fifth in the series next weekend because Shimoda will be out with a collarbone injury suffered last weekend. And the SMX points, Deegan, unless there's a disaster next weekend, will be the number one seed. But that is not clinched because they're still uh, within one race. Kitchen 35 points down, so we'll see. Those points will reset. Deegan would have a small three-point lead over Kitchen when the playoffs begin if he holds on for that number one spot. And then we'll start at C-Max Dragway in Charlotte in about three weeks' time. So those are the combined standings. That's the 250 class from Bud's Creek. Oh, all right. Now the party we figured was going to start at some point. Let's get an update from Jason Thomas. Well, there is a party going on down here. And uh, right now they're adding coolant to this motorcycle that they're trying to actively blow up. Well, we're trying to can save you give it? it right now. Oh, they're trying to save it, so then you can blow it we up. We just want the celebration to last as long as we can right now. Uh, it, actually, I was the first mechanic to ever blow up a Star Yamaha in a celebration with Christian Craig in 22. So I, was, I just want this one to last a little bit longer. Well, and there, there's a reputation to uphold is what you're telling me. Yeah, to the owners of Bud's Creek, I'm sorry for the huge hole we put in the ground for our burnout earlier, but it was worth it. Let's show them this rear tire, the uh, remnants of what this rear tire used to be. Uh, we've wow. had uh, some, some burnout going on down here. And as they add coolant to it, I don't think we're, we're quite done here. This Yamaha still has a little bit more life to give. So things are unraveling, but this is what it's all about, celebrating a hard fought championship for Hayden Deegan. Yeah, thanks, JT. What I've learned over the years of these championship celebrations, the bikes are just getting too reliable. Oh, I know. I was about to say, he's going to have to apologize to the president of Yamaha because he'd be like, hey. But yeah, they have to basically sabotage them to get them to blow up these days. You got to get wet, dude. We're all part of it. Let's talk to Brian Deegan. <laughs> well, Brian Deegan, you got me with champagne, but... <laughs> You have to, this has to be such a proud moment for you. No, the work good. goes on behind the scenes. I see you doing more work, more work than half the people here. You're videoing Gates, yeah. doing all the prep work, stuff at home. Tell us what it feels like here to be with your son in championship. Yeah, it's hard to explain. So many years, so many moments, so many hours, so many miles driven. Oh! <laughs> like, what the hell? So many hours put in. And yeah, it's great to come to the race on the weekend. Everyone gets to see the excitement, but it's during the week that the work goes down. So many long hours, very hot days. You know, days that, I mean, both of us are, you know, are like, man, we got to go put in the work today. And you got to, if you want to win, you got to do it. There's no, like RC said, there's no magic pill to it. You have to do the work. And I'm just super proud of Hayden for do it, making that choice to choose the hardest sport in the world and just take the risk, put in the work. And I'm a super proud dad because of that and, and the discipline he has to, to choose this sport. So, yeah, it's been very emotional. <laughs> Long time coming. Enjoy it. Uh, it's a good moment right here. I, I got to wonder, James, you were winning titles at a very young age. Is it almost lost how significant it is when you're that young? Is it almost like you'd look back later and realize 
yeah. what it really is like? Yeah, I mean, Hayden's he's super happy right now, and I think the biggest thing is once he sees his dad and his family, yeah, that makes him feel good. But he'll never he'll he won't understand this until yes. he has his own kids. How special this mm -hmm. moment is because. Even when he won that championship, he was talking about, I want to win more. Like, I want to dominate these guys. So as much as he appreciates it, like, he he doesn't really understand how cool this is. And um, it's something that is always to be with him and how young he is. But he's always had that pressure to be winning. People always expect it. So Hayden Deegan, congratulations, kid. Well deserved. Can't ever take that away from you. And this title was yours. They are in the danger zone. Oh, okay. We saw the whole family, but I had not seen uh, sister. But there's Haley right there, and that's his brother Hudson. There's mom and dad. So the whole Deegan family is here. One other thing this really unlocks for Hayden. I've been saying this is the first phenom we've seen in a while, winning at every level. He was fast in a 50, fast in a 65, 85, and now into the pros. He hasn't won that 250 Supercross title yet. You know, you and Ricky, when you came up, you were just winning at every level. We haven't seen that standard incline improvement in a while. So many riders have had hiccups. We often see maybe the second best guy as an amateur flip the tables. Hayden has been able to stay on that plane so far pretty much his whole career. Yeah, and and also to work on his game as he's trying to build oh, his revenue. Right Let's listen to it. Taking alcohol and with a little bit of flamethrower, <laughs> it'll backfire on you. I I'm just pumped. This SMX post race show. This is a standard championship scene, but we have never seen it live like this. And uh, maybe the KTM team can take notes because they might be celebrating. Look at that. Can you twist that thing any harder? They're trying to blow it up. Let's just pour some stuff down the throttle. Big gas. <laughs> I can't. I can't tell if that's him during the moto or trying to blow it up. You're getting there. Um, the best part is the bike's like this is what you do to me every race. I'm used to this. Oh yeah, you can hear Deegan around the track, and it sounds a lot like that. So as I was saying, it might be the Red Bull KTM team having a celebration, maybe like this next week, if Chase Sexton can hold on <laughs> in the 450 class. Everybody take a ride. I believe Adam St. Cirillo was able to catch up to Ian Harrison, the team manager over there at KTM. I'm here with Ian Harrison, team manager, Red Bull KTM. Ian, how rewarding is it? Obviously, there's so much work that goes in behind the scenes. and. Uh, for you guys to go on a run like you are right now, it, it takes the entire team. So how rewarding is it to see it all come together like it has? Yeah, you're right. You know, um, I always refer back that we got a little lucky someone's missing. But in the big picture, Chase has been excellent since Southwick. I think he's really happy with his bike. And, um, and it seems like each week he just gets a little stronger. And he's patient. And I know today he had a tip over, but he recovered incredibly well from that and then on top of that to have Aaron back him up what a day you know great day for us well congratulations it's been fun to watch thank you so much Chase Sexton sweeps Red Bud Chase Sexton down Sexton 40th to first sweeps Hank Town with the 1-1 one -one. Chase Sexton sweeps it and Sexton goes flying and down Three in a row, Chase Sexton, 1-1 one, one at Washougal. And Parts Limited's upcoming schedule will show you when and where Chase Sexton will try to clinch the 450 Pro Motocross title. Ironman Raceway, our west of Indianapolis. Race day live, 10 a.m. on Peacock Saturday. That's brought to you by motorsport.com. Ironman National Racing begins at 1 o'clock Eastern. You can watch and listen on Telemundo Deportes' YouTube channel if you want to see what the Spanish broadcast is like for us in the United States. And then it'll be the playoffs after the Labor Day weekend off. Yeah, everybody from TV is a superstar these days. Hayden Deegan, the biggest star of all today because he wraps up the 250 National Motocross Championship.
and a big step toward the 450 title with an overall win for Chase Dexton, for James Stewart, and Jason Thomas, and Adam Cincirillo. I'm Jason Wigand. See you next week at Ironman. Congrats to Chase Sexton.